with a facial burn injury requires diligent and meticulous care to ensure long-term outcomes are aesthetically and functionally optimal. At the Victorian Adult Burn Service, clients with facial burns are discharged once the team are confident they can manage their own face care. This video refers to the superficial dermal burn injury that we expect to heal within 10 to 14 days. Long-term outcomes may result in a colour mismatch due to hyper or hypopigmentation. However, scarring with this depth of burn is not expected. Sun protection and time are the only current treatment. This video demonstrates the face care management taught to clients prior to their discharge. Face care may be initially painful, but this should ease as healing occurs. It is suggested effective analgesia is taken as prescribed 20 to 30 minutes prior to the procedure to enable shaving and appropriate cleaning. This medication should be reviewed and weaned as healing occurs. The commencement of a daily shave for men is undertaken in hospital. The hair is initially shaved two and a half centimetres away from the burn area to enable a clear view and assessment of the injury. On discharge, the hairline or shaved eyebrows no longer need maintenance. However, daily facial shave using a good quality razor should continue until the burn area has healed. Face shaving can be undertaken in the shower or alternatively, as with a normal face shave, wet the face with warm water. Rather than lathering with shaving cream, which is likely to cause pain and irritation, it is suggested to use a paraffin ointment, KY jelly or diluted soap-free wash. Shaving assists with the removal of crusts, dead skin, hair, and reduces the accumulation of creams, which cause infection known as folliculitis. Face cleaning is required to be done frequently. The timing depends on the amount of slough accumulation, tightness or dryness. Dilute 3 ml of Dermavine soap-free wash with approximately 2 litres of warm tap water and use the solution to wash the face. It is recommended clients with tank water use sterile water which will be dispensed on discharge. Face cleaning enables the removal of excess ointment, the build-up of crusts and the removal of the accumulation of slough prior to the reapplication of creams. Wiping entails a firm hand as tolerated. A client with a head burn can include this care with the face care regime. The use of circular motions will assist the lifting and loosening of crusts. Diligence in cleaning is crucial in assisting the healing process. Special attention should be paid to the following areas. Cleaning in and around the auricle with the attention behind the ear and between the earlobe and the head. Cleaning on the eyelid and then away from the nose to avoid accumulation of debris in the tear gland. Along the bridge of the nose, attention to the tip of the nose and just inside the nostrils. Using a mirror can improve the thoroughness of the clean. Lips should be cleaned separately as slow healing lips may be an indicator of the herpes simplex virus. This may be a primary infection or reactivation of a latent virus due to the immunosuppressed state of the person. It results in slow wound healing and is confirmed by a positive viral swab. Care must be taken not to spread the virus to other areas of the body.
All ointment should be applied with clean hands and care should be taken not to cross contaminate different areas. The lips are best kept supple with paraffin or pawpaw ointment. Paraffin ointment is applied to the face to assist with the skin's moisture and to keep it supple. It is suggested a thin layer is applied so that there is a slight glisten to the skin. It is important to reduce the use of creams as healing occurs. Once healing is complete, a non-fragranced water-based moisturiser such as sorbeline is suggested. Superficial dermal face and neck exercises are required to reduce the tightening of the skin. If the neck is affected, rotate it from left to right and extend to look up at the roof and then flex to put the chin on the chest. Ensure ointments are applied to the face and lips to reduce the risk of cracking that can result from dried skin when exercising. The normal process of eating and talking provides moderate stretches to the skin, but the exaggeration of these movements keeps the face elongated. The following exercises should be undertaken approximately four to five times a day with 10 repetitions, holding for three seconds. Ask the client to open their mouth as wide as possible, then to wrinkle their nose. Squeeze their eyes tightly. Raise their eyebrows. Ask them to frown. Instruct them to pull their lips from left to right. Purse their lips like they are whistling, then to pull their lips into their mouth. Finally, ask them to run the tip of their tongue around the inside of their lips and cheek. 